<coughs> so my name is Catherine Kirk, not Captain Kirk, but that's why I was Captain of the Mathletes. Um, I am a copy editor, line editor, and proofreader, and I work primarily on fiction, mostly science fiction and fantasy. Um, in 2020, round about February, I was diagnosed with primary empty cellar syndrome. And once the pandemic was over, I could start treating it. That means that my pituitary gland overproduces a hormone that cancels out my dopamine. And the result of that is pretty strong ADHD symptoms, but it's highly treatable for me. I just take one little pill once a week. Um, but since I was born with it, I've grown up with a chronic dopamine shortage. So I've grown up with these um, ADHD-like symptoms. And so I've had to figure out coping mechanisms. And before I was diagnosed or in the process of getting diagnosed, I, I was pretty sure I'd like self-diagnose myself as ADHD because that's what everything was pointing to. Um, you can't really tell that you have empty cellar syndrome unless you've had an MRI of your pituitary gland. And most people don't just get those for the hell of it. So it seemed like a reasonable supposition. And in the process of kind of gathering tools to get through a work day, um, this is task cycling is one of the things I found. When my dopamine is low, I struggle with task overwhelm and procrastination. And I can often spend 12 hours staring into space because I don't know where to begin. So I want to share this tool with you. Maybe you can add it to your toolbox. Maybe it'll work for you, maybe not, but it's worth a try. And because I used to be a teacher and because when I um, practiced this presentation, it only took 20 minutes, this is going to be more of a workshop. So you will need um, something to take notes with. Maybe don't take notes with a cat. <laughs> But yeah, you, you might need like a pen, paper, or maybe an, alter, an extra monitor or something, just some way to take notes at some points, but we'll get there. So first I'll talk about what the problem is. Then I'm gonna dig a little deeper into where procrastination comes from, what happens when you're procrastinating, why you might be procrastinating. And then I'll explain what task cycling is and show you how it works in practice. But Right about step three and step four of this presentation, we're going to be doing it together. So by the end of this presentation, you should come away with a list of categorized tasks so you can try a task cycle if you like. Um, so first of all, because this is kind of workshoppy, I want people to be jumping in the chat and communicating, like throw out your ideas really spitball and brainstorm as you like, or not, if you don't want to, that's fine. So I have a question for you, first of all. What does it feel like when you're struggling to get going on all the stuff you have to do? What are the kinds of things going on in your head at that time? Like I'm gonna die, yep. I feel that. Shame, guilt, there's a lot of guilt involved. Tiredness before you've even started. Feels like you never be able to work again. Imposter syndrome, extreme fatigue. Yes, I get that. Yeah, those are all really, really relatable. So for me, frozen, paralyzed. Some people talk about like analysis paralysis. That's what people call it. I'm not sure I like the term, but it's where you're kind of, you get stuck in the planning phase before you even start the doing, um, doing other stuff feeling depressed, feeling lethargic, apathetic, yeah. So there's a cat, <laughs> it's just meowing very loudly behind me. Um, so for me, I feel like my to-do list is a mountain, everything's piled up. Um, Rasheen, is that how you say your name? Um, says, I feel like I'm trying to force myself to do something that I know is going to hurt. Like if I know I have to walk on a sprained ankle and I'm trying to make myself do it. Rosen, thanks. Yeah, it, it feels like absolute pain. Anxiety, I get um, kind of product anxiety. Like if I'm not gonna do it to the standard that I expect of myself, there's no point doing it, so why even try? Um, 
or, oh no, I'm just going to mess it up. So I don't know where to begin because it's not going to be perfect. Priorities, like I don't even know where to start, especially if I'm working on multiple books at a time and say they all have the same deadline. Like for some reason in February, every client wanted everything due on the 16th. Why would you do that to me? So I didn't even know which project to work on. Distractions, finding a new hobby. Um, I have a whole shelf of hobbies right over there. I also get that anxiety and guilt and shame because I don't want to let people down because a lot of the things I'm doing affect other people. Uh, Marnie says uh, they definitely get that anxiety. That imposter syndrome happens at the start of every work project. It's so frustrating. Yeah. But also day-to-day -day life, like family responsibilities take time and energy too. Like I'll be, I might be in the middle of work and the cat jumps up and I would love to pet the cat, but I have to get the work done. But then if I don't look after the cat, then what about the cat? And like, I don't want to feel guilty for playing with my cat or feeding her or looking after her because, yeah, I mean, I'm sure, like, I just have a cat. I don't have kids. If you have kids, I think that's kind of maybe a better example. Like, you need to do work, but the kids also have extra murals and you have to take them to all the things and everything piles up and you run out of hours in the day to get everything done. And it all just builds up this pressure. So I'm sorry if this slide is causing anxiety. Let's move on. <laughs> So some of these things are things I can't control. Like I can't control my energy levels. Sometimes I'm just tired. I can't control what clients expect, expect of me, like their expectations, because like I don't control their feelings. I'm not in their head operating them like ratatouille. Um, I can't control the inexorable passage of time. If there's a deadline, time runs out. One of these is a lie. Joshua thinks time is a great lie. I actually do control time. I have a time machine. No, that's a lie. No, um, for me, the lie is actually my energy levels because I find that with task cycling, I can kind of manipulate them a little bit. And I'll show you how that happens in a minute. <clears throat> then there are things I can control. I can control what I do next. Um, like that's a choice. I choose, I'll do this or I'll do this. Sometimes it doesn't feel like a choice or like I'm being pushed by my subconscious to do one thing or another. But ultimately, if you were in the, um, in Molly's talk yesterday, they hit on something. I was very confused and my brain still kind of tangled up, but there was something about, um, like things don't happen until you decide to do them but also you don't decide to do them until they're happening. I don't know. It was something like that. Watch that video. It'll blow your mind. Then your basic needs, that's like going to the toilet, drinking water. You can control those too. Drink some water, go to the toilet. Um, if this, I mean, I'm sorry, that might be a little bit ableist, those examples, but um, more a case of like addressing your needs is something you usually can control. And then the cat, uh, three guesses what, the, what this fly is. Well, no one can control the cat. <laughs> right. So you might already have some tools that help you to get things done. And maybe you discovered some at the conference. Um, Penny asked you had some amazing ones in their um, presentation yesterday. And I'm sure there are others in some presentations that I wasn't able to get to. So task cycling, I don't think it's something that can replace all of them. And I don't think it should. I think it's another tool to have in your toolbox so that you can use it when you need it. <clears throat> right. So um, what are some of the tools that you use to get things done? For example, Pomodoro's, things like that. You can post about it in the chat. Yeah, just do it for five minutes. I like that. Like, just do a little piece of it. A friend of mine talks about sidling up to the task. So don't do the whole big thing. Just kind of edge up and do a related thing. It kind of tricks you into doing the big thing. Um, Pomodoros are where you work in sprints. So you have a timer and you work for like 25 minutes, then you take a five-minute rest in 25 minutes. Um, body doubling is where you work with a friend, um, either with you in your physical space or virtually. Um, it could be on FaceTime or Zoom with cameras on and mics off or cameras off, however you like. 
There are some apps for it, like Suka, which used to be called Centered. And the NPC conference and community actually have a lounge or group on Suka where you can where we can body, body double together. So that's pretty cool. Ellis set that up last year. All right. Um, doing an adjacent task is also good. So I use task cycling when my usual tools aren't working. So with Pomodoro, sometimes I get really frustrated because I'll be deep in the middle of a task, like really in my flow state, concentrating, nothing in the world exists except the thing that I'm doing. And then the alarm goes off and I get yanked out of it and I lose my place and I hate that. Or I finish the task early and then I sit there going, well, the timer hasn't gone off yet. I guess I'll just wait for it and wait, like waste time doing that. Um, yeah, it's like, it's an external thing that's not really connected to me and how I feel. It's just an external thing that's bossing me around and I don't really like that. Reward bundling is good. I'm not sure what that is. Sounds good though. I like anything with rewards. I actually do some negative rewards to kind of bribe me to do things. So for example, um, if I've got a really awful thing that I have to do and I really don't want to do it, I'll say, if I don't get it done by this time, I have to donate money to my least favorite politician. So that'll definitely get it done. <laughs> um, then for, so uh, Rosen says, task bundling is when you do something rewarding at the same time as the thing. I like that. I, I guess maybe I do that with music. I listen to music that makes me dance and feel happy while I'm working, then it makes me happier while I'm doing that. Ooh, editing in the bath, that's genius. I need a waterproof laptop for that because I'm clumsy. So scheduling, people talk about time blocking. There's all different ways to create a schedule for yourself, but it never works for me for more than a day because every day is different and my energy levels vary from day to day. And I might not feel like doing the thing I said I would do, or when I made the schedule, I might've been really over ambitious. Swallowing the frog is when you do the worst thing first. So this comes from, I think, Atomic Habits. They say in the book, he talks about how, imagine that every day you have to swallow a frog. That is a task that's compulsory. It's something you absolutely have to do. Well, you could do it at the beginning of the day or the end of the day. And if you do it at the end of the day, it's just going to hang over you all day and make your whole day suck. So doing it first gets it done. So they talk about swallowing the frog but sometimes everything is a frog and it's all overwhelming and I don't know where to start. Right. So next up, I'm going to talk a little bit about the myth of procrastination and why it's not a moral failing. You're not lazy. If you procrastinate, it doesn't mean you're a bad person or that you suck at what you do. It's a symptom of other things in my opinion. I'm not a doctor, but this is just how I understand it for myself and how I've kind of found ways to overcome it. I actually used task cycling to make this presentation because I was procrastinating it so hard and I thought that that was hilarious. So first thing is question is like, why aren't you doing the thing? If you're procrastinating, it means you're not doing the thing you wanted to do. You're doing something else or you're not doing anything. So you could throw some other examples in the chat if you think of things that I haven't got here. Um, it might be that, like, I just sat down to work, but nope, I got to go pee. Or nope, I got to go get a snack. Oh, I got to go get water. And I'm, like, instantly out of my chair again. Or this thing is boring, and there's something more fun over there, so I'm going to go do the fun thing. Or there's something more important or more urgent. Or someone asked you at the last minute, oh, can you quickly do this thing for me? And that takes time away from the thing you said you would do. Maybe something else is more satisfying to do, like um, editing a novel can be a bit of a grind, whereas editing board game cards gives me a little dopamine hit as I finish each card, and each card is really fast. So um, some tasks give you more dopamine than others. The thing. <laughs> So when I, I think I, I talk a lot about um, doing the thing in this, and I think that comes from that meme from a cartoon, an old web cartoon, um, 
the author of that is she's actually written some great books if you can find the source of that meme that is i'm getting distracted anyway um maybe someone can post the link in the chat hyperbole and a half yes her books are fantastic she wrote a memoir about dealing with depression and neurodivergence and it's really really good recommended so yeah do all the things and this is how we're going to do it so maybe um sometimes i don't do the thing like i said because of the expectations um sometimes i want to do things for other people before myself because it feels like i can wait but other people depend on me or the thing is too big or i doubt that it's going to succeed so something that adhd is and other neuro neurodivergent people might struggle with is knowing when their basic needs aren't being met you might not realize you're hungry and you forget to eat or you might stay up all night because you don't realize how tired you are so part of what i've built into the task cycling is a chicken point where you stop and you actually check in with yourself and go am i hungry am i thirsty am i warm am i comfortable do i need a nap do i need a break because if you don't address the bottom layer of this pyramid you don't care about the stuff above it you won't you won't do any of the stuff above until you've taken care of those bottom ones um when it comes to safety needs and security i think that it's not just literal like are you safe is the house on fire um it's also comes down to like anxiety and insecurities so like anxiety for and then i think it's anxiety and insecurity things that are affected by external factors so for example if um when i lived in ecuador i had 13 small loud dogs around my apartment and they barked constantly all day and so that would that threatened my kind of security and safety because it was like an assault on the senses and i couldn't do any work while these dogs were barking so the only way that i could overcome that was by getting noise cancelling headphones and figuring out a way to block them out and then i moved to morocco and now it's fine um but yeah but like if there's anything that's an external thing it's not really something you can control that's threatening you or making you anxious it's something you really need to address before you can get to the next level the level above that is belongingness and love needs friendships and this i think is where social media comes in because a lot of us say oh i'm procrastinating i'm just scrolling through social media all day and people say that you're scrolling through social media because it gives you a little jolt of dopamine or um because it's kind of capturing your attention but i in the way that i use social media including things like slack or discord i think that and especially because i'm working from home now i think it's more about wanting to connect with other people and being a bit lonely and i'm an introvert i don't like phone calls i don't like parties but i don't like feeling forgotten by other people i want to know that other people care about me so i go on social media and i might reach out to someone and just want to say something to them and have them respond to me and so that could be replying to a post or could be sending a message or something like that but that is a need that's and i think that that's a basic need um then the next one is esteem needs prestige and feeling of accomplishment and that kind of plays into the uh imposter syndrome so like a lot of us might have been kind of like gifted and talented in school or whatever or um do really well with compliments in our work so when you're like an overachiever or whatever and you constantly seek affirmation from other people um working at, from home where you're the one responsible for your work and you don't really get that can make it really hard to see the point of doing the work like yes you're satisfying your client and you get paid but most people will never see the editing you, you've done except for the author so it's not really like you can say like look what a great editor i am and your friends go oh what a great job you did on that because we keep our clients work private so we don't really have that feeling of accomplishment all the time so 
sometimes we might procrastinate because of that imposter syndrome as well. And something that I do to deal with my imposter syndrome is getting testimonials from other people or from clients, I mean. But then also, like, sometimes the imposter syndrome is coming from a skill that I might not be confident in, so I might do some more training in that. Or I might anonymize, like, I might have one or two very close editor friends who are in, like, the cone of silence and occasionally will share work that we've done with each other. So, for example, if I caught a really hilarious mistake or I had a really a funny comment or query that I made that it just like was really entertaining. Cone of silence is um, like basically explicit trust that what you share between each other is not going to be shared outside. And I think it's a movie reference, but I haven't seen the movie. <laughs> um, yeah. So I have like a couple of friends who, if I've got a particularly great like zinger of a query that I'm probably going to rephrase to be more tactful, um, but I might send like the zinger form of it to another editor buddy and they'll send theirs to me and we'll just be like, ha ha, ooh, good one. And that kind of gives that little esteem need jolt if that's something that I'm feeling is lacking. So I think once you get above the yellow, you can start to get your work done. Like um, yellow is if you're, sorry, um, for people who have um, different visual needs, once you get above like the middle of the triangle. So if you've got your physio physiological needs, your safety needs and your belongingness needs taken care of, then you're ready to work. The higher needs like esteem needs and self-actualization come later and they're more like from like doing the work sometimes. Like feeling of accomplishment as you check something off, that's an esteem need. And that's something that you can get while you're working. But the things we really care about for the task cycling are the physiological, the safety, and the connection. And now this is actually a great time because this has been a lot of information dumped on you in one quick go. Um, we're actually going to check in with Maslow right now. If you played The Sims, you'll know this uh, graphic quite well. It's showing the uh, needs of a Sim who's not really doing very well right now. So check in with yourself. If you need the toilet, go to the toilet. If you're hungry, have a snack. If you need to step away or move away in, some, in whichever way you can, do that and we'll come back in five minutes. And if you want to stick around and chat away in the chat, go ahead. It's your signal to make your way back to your chair. Um, or however you were. And we're gonna get started again in just a minute. Hey, Josh, I think you can restart the recording now. Joshua. <clears throat> okay, so that was your first check-in with Maslow. How did it feel? Good. Refreshing. So Sarah said it felt refreshing. That is great, because that's part of it. Um, so now we're going to get to the good stuff, the task cycling. And I just love this graphic, because it is everything that task cycling is. It's about getting all of the things in the air done without falling over. So this is what task cycling looks like. Um, the first two steps, list and categorize, we just do before the very first cycle um, and then once you've done those, you don't need to do those again. Then you check in with Maslow, address your basic needs. Then you're going to do a reset task, a quick win task, the big thing, and then get a reward. And then you go back to checking in with Maslow, 
and then you reset quick win big thing reward and i'm going to explain what each of these are as we work through the process so this is where your note-taking materials come in first things first we're going to list so list everything you need to get done and everything you want to do not just the work stuff everything it's everything that you could possibly do today and it's you will not get everything on this list done today and that's okay this is like a master list some of us if you've tried bullet journaling this is like your brain dump list your master to-do list it's things with deadlines things without deadlines reminders appointments all of that stuff I do it in my notebook. So when I was preparing for this presentation, I did it. Um, I actually did task cycling to get it done because I was really struggling. And now I can't find it. <laughs> but it's in here somewhere. Um, I don't know. Ah, here it is. Yeah, so you just kind of like there's, there's a good example on the screen um it's your, your brain dump of all your tasks and i'll give you a couple of minutes to do that um this is just kind of like a practice round so you don't have to write absolutely every single thing right now but just get a bunch of different types of tasks down if you can um some people use post-its uh, when i lived in ecuador i had a whiteboard which i loved because i could have the categories already up on the whiteboard and just write stuff in to like categorize it as i go but I haven't told you what the categories are yet, so don't worry about that. Sometimes if you need to add things to a list while you're out and about, it might be worth keeping a list on your phone. Um, or um, emailing them to yourself or things like that, whatever works for you. Um, if you want a, a resource that's good for managing these kinds of lists, I like to use Trello as well, which um, is great for like having lists and then categorizing the lists and sliding them around. I, I like it because it's a very kind of tactile app with dragging and dropping things. Right. So if you're comfortable, um, you can shout out some of the things that you're adding to your list in the chat. Elizabeth Granda says they like to use good notes on iPad. That's cool. I think my iPad's from 2003 or something. It's very old. <laughs> Exercise. That's good. Meditation. Taking meds. It could be work tasks as well. Like send that email to that client, run perfected on that book. Hydrate. Yes. Laundry, oh my gosh, the laundry. Notes on your iPad is another way, good way to take track, to keep track. Taxes, ooh, let's not talk about taxes. Even things like remembering to, to change the empty toilet paper roll in the bathroom, like silly little things like that as well yeah getting birthday candles call mom i like that clean the kitchen oh that's a big one i might break that down into certain tasks but again like it could be the big thing you don't need to break it into steps at this point either update record of my business expenses oh that's a thing that i always it's always on the to-do list and then everything else gets done before it and it gets shifted along and along and along until the actual task of doing it gets so big because there are so many accumulated months of expenses that I haven't tracked. Cleaning to get specific rooms, I like that. Um, Elizabeth Summer's got a great um, explanation. Like she's got, um, they've got one that's like kitchen and then specific things for that place. That's cool. All right, so next we're gonna categorize. So you could do this on a new page or you could do it um, with uh, different symbols for different types or you could color code, whatever works for you. But we're gonna take this master list and we're gonna categorize these tasks. 
Now, some of the tasks might work in multiple categories. Go with your gut, go where, with where you feel that it fits. And that is based on how it makes you feel. It's a little bit like the Eisenhower matrix. Um, the Eisenhower matrix is depending, I think, on how important and how urgent things are. But this one is more about where it goes in the process. So I categorize them as tasks that are refreshing. Those are definitely tasks that are not work related. They're usually things that are away from your workspace or your screen. They're things that feel refreshing. They're things that use the magic portal. And by this, I mean, you have to go into another room to do it. You have to go through a doorway because there's something about doorways that just like wipe your brain and reset them. And some of you might've felt that when you go into a room and go, well, what was I looking for? It's because you went through the magic portal and the memory wiped you. Um, some of these tasks could be things that give you warm fuzzies, like caring for your loved ones, like feeding the cat. Um, a good example for this is like shifting the laundry from the washer to the dryer, things like that. So you can mark some of your tasks for that. So I've, I've got a, a couple of those. If um, People in the chat can say like, which tasks are you assigning as refreshing tasks? For me, they tend to be things that are cleaning or household related, because if my space is clean, I feel more refreshed. Then the next category is the quick win. So those are things that could be work tasks. They're, they could be in your workspace and they only take one or two steps to complete or less than 10 minutes to do. For example, replying to a client to say, thanks for sending that file. If you use a client management system that like automatically generates your invoices, it could be send that invoice. So these are the, the tasks that don't feel overwhelming, but they, like on the Eisenhower matrix, they'd kind of be like important, but not urgent. Um, they're, they're just like the little things that tend to pile up. Uh, Sonia says, when you color code, do you use colors you like a lot for the thing, the big thing to make it less thingness? That's a great idea. I don't actually color code. Um, because I found that when I was color coding, I spent too much time picking colors. Um, I think you can see my cursor here. Good. Cool. So then the next is the, the category is the big, overwhelming, important stuff. That's the, in the Eisenhower matrix, it would be important and urgent. It would be like, the stuff that might take multiple cycles to complete. It might take multiple days to complete things that you could break down into steps. It could be something like clean the kitchen. Cause that's for me, that's overwhelming. It could be edit the book. It could be write the book, um, or make the slideshow for the NPC conference. And then your last category is reward tasks. So those are fun, restful things. I recommend that they are away from your screen um, because of like resting your eyes and it's a bit more refreshing to not stay in the same spot. These, the rewards are the things that we tend to get stuck in and like procrastinate in because they're fun. So you might have to set boundaries or rules for them. So I like to have rewards that have kind of an end point to them. So it wouldn't be play a video game. It would be play one level of the video game. And if I, if I fail, I fail. Oh, well, like one attempt at one level, or it would be do cross stitch for the length of one chapter of an audio book or if you're into Zen tangling, which is like structured doodling, it could be do one pattern in one segment of the Zen tangle. So Zen tangling is where you kind of scribble on a page to create segments and then you fill those segments with repeating patterns. And I do, I used to do that um, 
I think in a different notebook I had, uh, that was like my reward task or my Pomodoro rest task was just doing that for five minutes, kind of a, like a meditative task. It could be color in one section of, an, of a coloring book, or it could be complete one row of your knitting or something like that. So let me know if you need a little more time to categorize what you've got. But I think while I've been talking, you should have been doing that. But if not, I'll give you a couple of minutes. Marnie says, the reward part is a real place of time blindness for me. Also, I tend to break my own rules and boundaries. How do you handle this? Yes, I tend to not be strict enough with myself on them. So having something that's <clears throat> that has like that natural end point to it really helps. So um, like if it, it could be like go for a walk and the return point, like when I end up back at my house, like if I, I'll, I'll say I'm going to walk in a loop and when I loop back to my house, once I get back to my door, the walk is finished. Now it's time to move on. Or um, if it's something that's like a continuous task, I find like natural stopping points in it. Like I said, with the cross stitch or something like that. Like if you do cross stitch, it could be stitch this stitch for one color in this like block of a hundred stitches just do that one color and then you're that, that's it for that reward. That reward's finished. So I try not to do, like if it's something like watching a YouTube video, make sure that autoplay is off because it'll just jump to the next video and then you get stuck there. Um, if it's, if you're listening to a chapter of an audiobook on Audible, you can set it to turn off at the end of the chapter. Um, and so sometimes doing that can help, or um, I might set a timer for myself, especially if you set a timer on your phone and you leave your phone away from where you're doing the reward. So you have to get up to turn it off. That'll kind of snap you out of it sometimes. <laughs> a reward for stopping at your predetermined boundary. I like that. <laughs> All right. So like rewards are fine and we can get stuck here for a while, but let's move on. So now this is kind of like the planning stage. We've, we spent a bit of time on the planning, but this is time well spent because once we get into the cycles, it gets very like snap, snap, snap. And you're not going to be sitting there doing a lot of planning while you're doing the work. So I already did the slide about how to categorize and where to categorize. So that's fine. Maslow well check in. Um, this guy, Dear Modern on YouTube, he does like, videos about feng shui, but he's hilarious. And he started doing these short videos about solving little problems. And he says, don't be a wiener instead of don't be a whiner. Um, he goes, don't be a wiener, fix it. And there'll be things like, oh, I'm so lonely. And then in the next shot, he's got a cat. So things like that. Um, so this is your chicken with Maslow. Do you have your, are your needs ready? So we've done our categorizing. Um, we've made our list. We've categorized it. Check in with Maslow. If you, if you've, um, address all those needs, you're ready to start the cycle. And we kind of already did a lot about this. So now you're going to be doing the quick win and the big tasks. And these, as, you, as we start the main cycle, you can get kind of stuck in, Ooh, which one should I do? So there are different ways that you could choose these tasks. You could do the worst first. You could do them in order of urgency. Or you can kind of gamify it, roll some dice. It doesn't really matter. These are all things that need to get done. So just pick one. You could draw it from a hat. You could have a bunch of like folded up papers in a jar and pick one. Um, close your eyes and drop your finger on the page. There are plenty of ways to randomize decisions. Um, so find one that works for you. I try not to give myself more than about 10 seconds to pick what I'm doing next. Um, also sometimes I'll pick, uh, what I'm doing before I start all the cycles, uh, before I start the cycle. So we're at the 45 minutes, but this has kind of been a workshop E session. So there will be a shorter question time at the end. So it should be okay. Right. So now you're going to start your main cycle. 
you do your reset task. Do something from the reset list. For example, I will clear my desk to the kitchen, like take, take all the dishes that are on my desk to the kitchen. That's it. That's all I'm doing. I'm not washing them. I'm not putting them in the sink or filling them. I just pick them up and I put them there and that's it. That's done. Then you do your quick win. Get some dopamine from checking something off your list. So I might um, send an email saying, thanks for sending those files. That kind of starts my engine and gets me ready to do the big thing. Like the sense of achievement I get from checking off that thing on the list can carry me through to doing the big thing. So I start doing the big thing. And this is where this is different from like Pomodoro's where an external thing is telling you when to stop. For task cycling, like the big thing for me in task cycling is that you do it until you lose focus. So you have to be monitoring yourself to say, oh, I am now out of focus. Focus is lost. I've looked away. I switched over to Facebook. I started like doing something else. You've lost focus. That's it. You're done on that cycle. Like you're done on that stage of the cycle. Move on to the reward. Because when you lose that focus and you start like fiddling around or procrastinating or something, your body's saying, okay, I need a break. So give yourself a break and don't be guilty about it. So um, switch tasks when the focus is lost. Then you go and do your reward and do the reward until your boundary for the reward comes up. And don't feel guilty about it. It's okay to have rests. Life isn't just about work. For me, sometimes the, the main way that I lose focus is that my cat jumps up on me. And then my reward is hanging out with the cat and petting the cat. So she manages my time for me. <laughs> right. So once you, the, you've completed a cycle, once you've finished the reward, you can kind of assess, like, did you finish the thing you needed to do? Do you need to do another cycle? Or just go do something else, maybe have a change of scenery. That all depends on how you feel. So throughout the whole process, you should be checking in with yourself. Like you'll be checking in with yourself on your basic needs with the Maslow checks. And then during the main task, you'll be kind of going, am I focused? I've lost focus, time to stop. So I use task cycling to make this presentation and I'm just gonna quickly show it so that we have a little time for questions and some tips at the end. This was my big list. And when I made it, I actually just wrote them down into the categories. So it was kind of a self categorizing list. I'm not going to spend too much time showing this slide, but it just gives you some examples. The slides will be shared so you can see them. Josh's hand is up. What's up, Josh? You're muted. Okay. Um, he was just uh, letting you know that you were close to the time limit. It is 1049. Right. I thought that I had an hour from this presentation, so I'm really sorry. This is probably going to go until the hour. Is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. Just figured I'd let you know. Okay, thank you. All right. Stead walk is a movement by some editors to help us with um, getting outside, getting some exercise during the workday when we're working alone at home. So if you go for a walk, you basically take a photo and post it on social media with the hashtag and then see what other people are up to. And you can fill your timeline with some nice like landscape scenery photos from everybody who's out and about and doing stuff. So then I did this. This is one cycle. I made coffee. I moved to the laundry, emailed a client, did one work task. The cat jumped on me, lost focus, pet my feline overlord. Then I started a second cycle. I had a snack. And then I carried the dishes from the snack to the sink. Then I sent a course exercise to my tutor, carried on on the big task and finished it. And then because I finished it, I gave myself a nice reward, which was to do cross stitch until the end of the chapter of an audiobook, which is like my favorite reward. So these are just some tips at the end now. We're almost done. First of all, the cycles are not time-based. There's no external signal bossing you around, no, no alarm clock, unless you've used one for your rewards. The signal is, did you finish it or did you lose focus or did something interrupt? 
you have to go in order for the cycle to work. You have to remove the barriers, then reset your brain, build momentum, use the momentum, and then rest. That's what makes it work. That's what builds the energy and motivation. Um, you don't have to work on the same big task each time. If one thing is more urgent and the other thing's more interesting, you could try alternating. I like to do that if I'm really into one book by one author and really hating the book by the other author because I tend to work on two books a month. Resets and rewards can be repeated. They don't have to be checked off as complete. Um, try having rewards that are away from your workspace. And if your rewards are getting stale, try cycling them. So you can use your master list for like as long as it takes to get all of those big things done. And then keep, you can keep those rewards for future master lists. Like the master list is kind of ongoing. It's not the master list just for today. Proportion matters. If you finished a big thing quickly, give yourself a quick reward. If you finished a big thing that took a long time, give yourself more time to recover. Don't waste too much time choosing the next task. Give yourself about five to 10 seconds or at the start of each cycle, decide which of the four tasks you'll do. I mean, which four tasks you'll do from the list. Uh, multitasking is not your friend. It can be very tempting to bundle the reset, refresh, or quick tasks in a single round. Like, oh, I'm going to carry these dishes. You know, I might as well wash them. You know, I might as well wash the whole kitchen. And then you've done, you've turned that quick thing into a big thing. You've just washed the whole kitchen. So I kind of have to be strict with myself not to multitask because it's hard not to. If you had a big interruption, like um, I was once editing a book and there was literally an earthquake and I had to evacuate the building, probably need to restart the whole cycle process to get back into it. You can use other tools while task cycling. So if Pomodoros work for you, use them on the big task step. One round of Pomodoros and then move on to the reward. Or when you're prioritizing or choosing which tasks to do, you can swallow the frog. And don't forget about your social needs. Try body doubling. Try, as a reward, try communicating with a friend or family member if that's something that you enjoy. Then most of all, avoid burnout. Make sure you're getting enough rest. Do not neglect the rest step just because you feel, oh, wow, I'm really going. I'm going so well. I'm getting so much done. I'm going to skip the rest and just go straight to the next big thing. You're going to exhaust yourself if you do that. Task cycling can use up more energy than you're used to spending. Um, give yourself big breaks. That's it. Any questions? We have a little, about five minutes left. Or over time anyway, but yeah. And these are two pictures of my feline overlords. The one on top is peaches and the other one is alabaster. Alabaster cuddled me for about an hour before this presentation. So I was full of dopamine from that. Thank you. So their names, um, Peaches comes from The Expanse and Alabaster comes from the Broken Earth Trilogy.